Hello and welcome to Alibloggertech in association with AHAVTS.com brings you this video blog on Nuage VCS Enterprise Deployment. My name is Aleem HLE. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm this handsome gentleman to the right. And in this video blog, we'll be deploying a basic Nuage VCS Enterprise along with zones and subnets and basic policies. We'll be utilizing ESXi VMs. And when we instantiate those ESXi VMs into our overlay, we'll be utilizing the Nuage Metadata plugin. So let's get started. All right, so as shown on the previous slide, I showed the overall abstract for the Nuage VCS installation as posted as part of a two-part blog on aliblogger.tech. Abstract shown here indicates the VLAN planes for the VRS deployed, the top of rack switches, and how they're all interconnected. As we can see, VLAN 5 is associated with VRS 1 and VLAN 6 is associated with VRS 2. The concept I'm trying to bring across is that when the VMs get instantiated on these two different servers hosting VRS 1 and 2, the underlay fabric will route and have reachability to these VLANs, after which the VXLAN tunnel will be created to support connectivity to the VMs within the new VCS overlay. Of course, that would all depends on the policies we put in place to make that happen. So as per the blog, we'll create an enterprise within the VSD dashboard. Then we'll create a user for that enterprise. We'll then create an L3 template, a three-tier architecture with app, DB, and web zones. Then we'll create subnets for each of those zones. Then we'll attach VMs to the app zone and DB zone and verify connectivity and reachability between the two VMs. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize the screen here and bring up our VSD dashboard. The first thing I'll do here is click on the plus and let's go ahead and name our organization and or enterprise. So I'll name this Ali Blogger. Underscore tech. Copy this as a description. And local autonomous system as 65,000. I'll click create. Okay, once that syncs up, I will click on this enterprise, then move over to settings, and we'll need to add a user. So we'll add myself as a user, first and last name, and the username will be Ali Blogger. Email address, well, I'll just use a generic one for right now. Phone number, again. And just add a generic one for right now. Then I'll add a password. Hopefully they're both the same. <laughs> then I'll click create. Once that syncs up there, we'll go into the groups and add this user to each of these groups. And you'll see where it plays into the overall VM deployment shortly. So that everybody group has it already. Network design, add that, and for the security admin, I'll add him as well. Excellent, great. So now let's go ahead and move over to networks. And we go ahead and create a layer three domain. First thing I'll do is click the plus, create a template. Let's call it Ali Blogger L3 template. And that has a description. Then create. And now with this template, I will add my zone templates for my three tier architecture for app, DB, and web. So I'll add a zone template here. Matter of fact, I'll add all three of them and then edit. Okay. So the first one will be app zone. Next is DB. The last, of course, is web. Okay, we'll update that. And from here, let's go ahead and instantiate this template into a domain. So I'll right click and click instantiate. And now we'll name this domain. Let's call it Aliblogger L3 domain. Okay, add that as a description. And we'll leave everything as is for right now. And I'll click instantiate. 
And now we have our L3 domain here. Now from here, I'll go ahead and add my subnets for each one of these zones. So I'll pull a subnet from the right, call this app subnet. Okay, we'll leave the IP information the same as NewWatch VSC has a built-in IPAM within the VSD. Click Create, and we'll do the same thing for DB and Web. Okay, Create, and now for Web. All right, now there we have it. A three-tier architecture is done. So now let's go ahead and bring VMs from ES6i into this SDN overlay, and let's see if we could ping between them. I'll add a VM into the app zone and one into the DB zone. But before I do that, let's click on policies here and create two default policies for ingress as well as for egress. So for ingress, this would be the default ingress policy. And for the purposes, we'll turn on all of this functionality. Click Create. Now, we'll do the same thing for egress. Let's go ahead and turn these all on. Enable this policy. And click Apply Changes to the upper right. So let's go ahead and add our VMs. So I'll bring up vCenter here. And as you can see, we have two VMs, VMVCS01 and VMVCS02. And to the right, you could see under the Monitor tab, we have these sub-tabs for NuWatch Login and for NuWatch Data. So I'll click on the NuWatch Data here, and I'll just click Log Out to make sure that there is no users logged in. All right. So now let's go ahead and log into the VSD using the information for the VSD, CSP. All right, let's click Submit, and a new user has successfully logged in. Great, so we'll click OK. I'll click Refresh here, so all the metadata information can be updated. So for VMVCS01, the enterprises we have here is the shared infrastructure and Alibloger Tech. So we'll click on Alibloger Tech. The user will be Alioblogger. That's the user created within that enterprise. The domain will be a Alioblogger L3 domain. We'll go ahead and choose the zone, which is the app zone. There is no policy group or redirection targets, but we do have a network, and that will be the app subnet. And I'll just move this over a little bit here so we can see that VM get instantiated into our SDN overlay. A little bit more. Go over a little bit more. All right, so as you can see, we see the, uh, the subnets here. Let's go ahead and click Apply. And metadata applies successfully. And as you can see, as soon as I finish Save That, the VM has been instantiated into our SDN overlay. So let's go ahead and click on this VM interface here. And as you can see, it says VMVCS01 has the MAC address and an IP address of 1064.90.58 with a default gateway of 1064.90.1, which is in the same subnet as which we apply to this app subnet to the app zone. Great. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to our VMVCS02, but this time onto the DB zone. Enterprise, Alibloger Tech, user, okay. Domain, still the L3 domain. The zone now will be DB zone. And the network is now the DB subnet. Let's go ahead and click Apply. Metadata successfully applied. And there is our second VM. Great. This one has an IP address of 10.45.29.160. All right, so let's go ahead into the web console of these VMs and verify that the IP addresses have been given, and let's see if we can ping across to each one of them. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up our VMs here, bring it back into the screen. We'll go on the first VM, Summary tab, 
and into the web console. Okay. So we'll do an if, if config, and we see the IP address as 10.64.90.58. Let's go ahead and verify that. And yes, the IP is the same. Excellent. Let's go ahead and ping the default gateway to make sure that we can reach it. All right, we can reach the default gateway. Excellent. Let's go ahead and ping that second VM. So it will be 10.45.29.160. Let's hope we can ping. And yes, we can successfully ping from the app zone VM to the DB VM. And the reason for that is, is because within our VSD dashboard for our policy settings for ingress and egress, we set a default policy to allow all. And there you have it. We have successfully created a basic enterprise within the VSD dashboard. We have successfully deployed an L3 domain, three tier architecture and subnets and instantiated two VMs from ESXi utilizing the Nuage Metadata Plugin for vCenter.